Hello, and welcome to our daily coverage of the meeting here in Toronto. Uh, we have with us here Dr. Carol Shields from the Oncology Service at Will's Eye Institute in Philadelphia. Uh, Dr. Shields, welcome. Thank you. It's uh, great to be here. Thank you. Um, you, as usual, gave an outstanding talk yesterday uh, about the role of enhanced depth imaging, OCT, in choroidal tumors. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So EDI OCT, as it's called, is very important in the analysis of interocular tumors. Um, back in the time domain era, we didn't see ve very much detail about choroidal tumors uh, on imaging. Now in the spectral domain era, using EDI OCT, we can see the details of the tumor, the surface topography of the tumor, and in my report that I gave yesterday, I showed that there are different um, buzzwords that help you to recognize uh, various tumors. Great. Do you think you could maybe recap some of those buzzwords? Sure. Um, so I started out by giving the buzzword for choroidal nevus. Choroidal nevus on EDIOCT has a very gentle, very smooth dome-shaped appearance, and it has shadowing deep to the tumor. Melanoma has the same appearance, dome-shaped, very smooth appearance. Um, but there's a difference with uh, melanoma the retina, if detached, has shaggy photoreceptors. We're not sure what that is. We think it might be swollen photoreceptors or maybe macrophages on the back of the retina. But it gets really exciting when you look at metastasis and lymphoma. They tend to show a very irregular surface. So metastatic tumors have a lumpy, bumpy surface. And lymphoma, we kind of describe it like the ocean. It can be, if it's very thin, Placid, as it gets thicker, it gets rippled, and as lymphoma gets thicker in the choroid, surface topography becomes undulating. We call that the seasick appearance. Oh, so we went on to talk about um, congenital hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium, mm -hmm. which, as you know, is flat. Mm -hmm. um, but we can identify that the outer retina, just abruptly, right where the chirpy starts, all the photoreceptors are lost, and right where the chirpy ends, photoreceptors pick up again. Mm -hmm. So that explains the absolute uh, sure. sc scotoma yeah. at the site. And um, I think another very important part of my talk was using this modality in the operating room. Hmm. Um, there are new handheld EDIOCT instruments yeah. that we now use to image children uh, under anesthesia. Excellent. Yeah. Do you see uh, EDIOCT as replacing a previous? imaging modality or just further corroboration for making the diagnosis? I think it allows us to understand diseases in greater detail. Okay. Um, sure, it's spectral domain has pretty much replaced time domain, mm -hmm. OCT. I think it's complementary to okay. your indirect examination, fluorescein, mm -hmm. ultrasound, and then EDI OCT. I mean, with retinoblastoma, when we image these kids, I used to think where I saw the tumor was all diseased retina. But with EDIOCT, often we'll see normal retina going up over the tumor and just the central apex with full thickness diseased retina and then the exophytic portion under the tumor. So we do, we think we might have some vision in that little residual that's going up over the tumor. Wow. There's a lot to learn wow. with EDIOCT. Well, that's great. This is fascinating stuff. And thank you yeah. again for taking a few moments to share it with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.